Hey, did you see that a Night Fae Priest recently won the biggest tournament of the year? Skill capped, what's going on? I'm sure you have seen tons of new covenant choices in PvP recently, and you probably have some questions. Luckily for you, we have some answers. We will be going over some of the new covenant swaps that many pro players are making in 9.1, and letting you know which ones are gimmicks and which ones are legit. Let's start off with some meta picks that are hot off the press. As we mentioned just a minute ago, a Night Fade Disc Priest actually won Season 2 Finals in the AWC. While there has been a lot of theory crafting about Night Fae in the past, this was one of the first times it was in the public's eye. And although many priests are still sticking with Venther, it's worth exploring what makes Night Fae so good. It is almost entirely due to the Night Fae Guardian spell. This ability will temporarily cause your Power Word Shield to grant 20% damage reduction and your Shadow Men to give cooldown reduction on affected targets. On paper, this is extremely good, especially in a comp like Jungle Cleave, which relies on having sustained bulkiness combined with efficient cooldown trading. Outside of Jungle Cleave and comps like RMP, Venther is still the covenant of choice, since your team-wide cross CC allows you to freely cast mind games during kill setups. In priest comps like Jungle Cleave, where globals are fairly limited, mind games casts are a bit more difficult to weave in, making Night Fae a more consistent option. So if you are on the fence about switching, it really depends on what comps you generally play. If you are a diehard RMP fan and sometimes like to play Shadow, stick with Venther. If not, you might want to consider Night Fae. Your playstyle as Night Fae should be a bit more conservative. Again, you aren't looking for coordinated burst setups with your team. Instead, your strength is in your ability to keep your team alive. This means limiting your offensive interactions, playing more like a Resto Druid or Resto Shaman than a traditional Disc Priest. Moving on, we have Kyrian Balanced Druids. Look, Covenant choices have been all over the place for Boomkins during Shadowlands. Kyrian and Night Fae rocked early Season 1, but now the choice seems to be between Kyrian and Necrolord. The reason why Kyrian is seeing a sudden resurgence is the strength of a new legendary called Kindred Affinity, which grants stat bonuses on targets affected by your Kindred Spirits. This works really well when playing with Night Fae or Necrolord players, since it grants bonus haste and versatility respectively. Many Boomkins are now playing with Windwalker Monks, and since many Monks have switched to Necrolord, having an additional 8% versatility is a huge deal, since it modifies all of their burst damage and creates even deadlier kill setups. The playstyle of Kyrian is much different than Necrolord and Night Fae. While Necrolord relies on consistent rot pressure and Night Fae looks for single big momentum swings, Kyrian is far more setup based. Your goal isn't to win the game on your first CC setup, but instead to gradually wear down at the enemy team's defenses using repeated CC setups combining your kindred spirits with your partner's cooldown. And speaking of cooldowns, let's talk about Necrolord monks. I am sure you have encountered a few by now, and yes, they are pretty broken. We talked about damage modifiers a lot recently, and we even made a mini documentary about them in Shadowlands, which you should check out by the way. Necro Lord gives Windwalker monks an additional damage multiplier that they can stack on top of all of their other abilities. Bone Dust Brew gives abilities a 50% chance to deal 35% more damage. That is good enough on its own, but there is also a conduit called Bone Marrow Hops, which increases the effect of Bone Dust Brew, essentially giving the ability a 50% chance to deal over 50% additional shadow damage. When you combine this with all the other crazy modifiers on spells like Spinning Crane Kick and Rising Sun Kick, Necrolord monks have insane offensive power. And that isn't even considering the defensive benefit of Necrolord. Monks are one of the squishiest melee classes, but this is hardly a problem as the Maldraxian Covenant, as Fleshcraft and Ooze's frictionless coating give Windwalkers some much needed durability. The playstyle of Necrolord isn't really that much different than Kyrian. Instead of having Weapons of Order, you now have Bone Dust Brew as an additional damage modifier for your kill setups. So let that damage stay until your opponent's HP hit zero. Before we go into our next meta swaps, did you know there is a covenant anyone can join and it is proven to increase your rating in arena? It's called skill capped and all classes can join. Okay, maybe that was a bit too cheesy. Anyway, skill capped has helped over half a million users increase their skill and rating in arena and now for prices as low as $4.99 a month, it is the perfect time to join. Signing up will give you instant access to all of our videos as well as an invite to the premium section of our discord where you can get answers to all of your PvP questions. With proven results and a money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. So check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Moving on, let's go over some options that are starting to see more play in the meta and are worth some experimenting. Necrolord is becoming an increasingly popular option for Shadow Priests, not only because of its increased bulkiness, but also the ease of use with its damaging ability. Unholy Nova is a 1 minute cooldown burst spell that causes a damage over time effect called Unholy Transfusion, a disease that adds up to substantial damage. 
The strength of this ability has encouraged priests to swap over to the Pallid Command Legendary, which summons an NPC that casts increasingly powerful damage on targets affected by Unholy Transfusion. This Ease of Use Covenant ability works really well in Shadow Priest comps that are less reliant on precise CC setups, but instead need consistent damage in order to land kills. As Necrolord, you don't need to focus on an interruptible damaging cast for your setups, but instead your goal is to outlast your opponents with your tankiness combined with your powerful instant cast damage with Unholy Nova. Rounding out our newest meta picks, we have Necrolord Warlocks. Yes, just like Shadow Priest, both Destruction and Demonology Warlocks are seeing massive migrations over to Maldraxxus. Once again, the bulkiness of Necrolord helps cover a lot of the weaknesses Warlocks have in the current meta. Combined with Decimating Bolt and its Shard of Annihilation Legendary, Necrolord offers demo and Destro locks an additional kill setup. Before we look at some experimental options, let's briefly cover Warriors. Warrior Covenant choices have been all over the place in Shadowlands, and with buffs to both Necrolord and Kyrian in 9.1, we have both detoured and circled back to where we were early in Season 1. The overwhelming majority of Warrior players have abandoned Venther in favor of both Necrolord and Kyrian for Season 2. Necrolord is a really popular option in 3v3 melee cleave setups. Aside from its increased bulkiness, Conqueror's Banner is just about busted when paired with classes like Rhett Paladins and Windwalker Monks. Your playstyle in these comps generally involves setting up really big kill attempts by stacking Conqueror's Banner with your team's offensive cooldowns. Its damage multipliers on top of major offensive CDs like Avenging Wrath are often too much to handle for many inexperienced teams. Kyrian offers a bit more control with Spear of Bastion and its complementary legendary called Elysian Might. This combination is really flexible and allows warriors to slot into almost any comp, including setup based teams like Warrior Mage and cleaves like Windwalker Warrior and TSG. We should also note that Kyrian is exceptionally good in 2v2 as it gives additional lockdown into increasingly popular Resto Druid setups. Spear Bastion encourages you to play slightly more setup based, looking to have extended lockdowns on kill targets every minute and gradually wearing down at enemy defensive, which is far different than the playstyle of both Necrolord and Venther. Finally, we have an experimental build that some of you might already be familiar with. Night Fate Paladin is seeing some looks for both Retribution and Protection. Recently made popular by Rex Troy Video, Night Fate gives Paladins a damage multiplier called Blessing of Summer. With the Covenant specific legendary called Seasons of Plenty, the effect of this damage multiplier is effectively doubled. In turn, this just means way more damage, especially when used on classes that already benefit from damage stacking, like Windwalker Monks and Balanced Druids. It is hard to tell right now if this is just simply a gimmick or if there is a place for this build in competitive PvP, but if you want some big bangs, then Night Fae Paladin might be right for you. Alright guys, thanks for sticking around. Let us know what you think in the comments below and be sure to tell us about any weird covenants you have been playing in Season 2. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. We upload multiple videos every week and work hard to make sure you stay up to date on the current meta. As always though, thanks for watching. See you soon.